Hey, what's up guys? Brad here, aka Home Theater Gamer, and I'm in my home theater today because I want to talk about dynamic EQ and actually try to answer the question and figure out, is it helping your sound or is it hurting it? Well, let's get started, shall we? Oh, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's not good. Oh boy. I'm never doing that again, ever. So what is dynamic EQ and what does it do? Well, as volume decreases, our ears and brain perceive sounds differently. Sounds lack fullness, bass lacks impact. Sounds above and behind us may not register properly. Dynamic EQ tries to fix that by using the results from Odyssey's room correction software, along with factoring in how we as humans perceive sound at lower volume levels by dynamically adjusting the EQ and levels of select channels, depending on volume, of course. And that's really where the problem lies. You see, anything dynamic is gonna dynamically adjust things. We won't know what they are, and we have no control over it. Is dynamic EQ adjusting the level? Is it adjusting the EQ curve? Is it adjusting both? Yeah, it's probably doing all three at the same time. And that can cause some really weird audio issues and make everything just sound unbalanced. And so really, that's what this video is about. We're gonna to try to get to the bottom of that. Now, I'm not gonna do anything incredibly scientific, but I am gonna be very scientific with my 15 year old Radio Shack SPL digital meter. So say we start with dynamic EQ on at zero dB. That should take anything dynamic EQ is doing and turn it off because it's not supposed to do anything at zero dB. It starts to come into play anything below that. So I'm gonna go minus five decibels every single test pattern. And we're gonna see if things start to go kind of wonky and where they start to go kind of wonky. Now I'm gonna separate these into the main channel. So left, center, right, right surround, left surround. I'm not gonna do Atmos because I don't have anything that will test Atmos. And by using the internal test tones, you actually just completely get rid of all dynamic EQ and stuff like that. So that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna separate those and I'm gonna use Avia, which is an ancient DVD, but it'll work for our purposes. I have everything level matched already in the receiver according to this SPL meter. So we'll go through all five of the main channel speakers and then we'll also do the subwoofer separately at the end. And we'll see what happens. So let's get started. All right, so here we are. Got zero dB, nothing happening. Got dynamic EQ off on the left side of the screen, dynamic EQ on on the right side of the screen. That's hard to say. At zero dB, we are not going to see a difference at all just as expected. Dynamic EQ is pretty much disabled at this point. The whole point of it is to engage as the volume gets lower. So now we are at a 5 dB, minus 5 dB, sorry. And we're, again, front channels are pretty much gonna stay the same. There might be some minor fluctuations here and there. That's expected. They are sound waves. They're gonna change. We're seeing about a one decibel increase here already with dynamic EQ on, and we're only going to see that boost up even further as the volume decreases. So now we're here at a minus 10 dB. And like I said before, outside of some minor fluctuations, the front channels are gonna be relatively the same with either dynamic EQ off versus on. And again, right here, we're seeing about a four decibel increase, three to four decibel increase in the surround channels, just going to minus 10 dB. Now at minus 15 dB, again, we're seeing some minor fluctuations in the front channels there, and that's to be expected, again, sound waves. But as soon as we start to move to the surround channels, we're gonna see those numbers boost up on the right-hand side versus the left-hand side. And this one right here, we're going from about 66 dB on the left, about 68 to 69. So that's a three decibel increase, which is, is pretty substantial. And now moving to minus 20 dB, again, like I've said already, front channels are gonna relatively remain the same. We have some minor fluctuations. And then we move the surround channels and we're already at about five dB of an increase four to five dB of the surround channels versus the front channels, which is gonna create a, a very unbalanced sound, especially as you lower the volume, even though the way we, we perceive things is different. That's boosting it way too much, in my opinion. So again, we're at here, minus 25 dB. We're going from 56 on the left to 61, 62. So about a six decibel increase, five to six decibels. 
That's a very, very big difference between each of them. That's that's kind of crazy. I'm, I'm actually surprised. And here we're going from 51 decibels to 59. So we're boosting it eight decibels, eight decibels in the surrounds, which is completely, completely unbalanced. Your ears will definitely be able to pick that up. Moving on to the subwoofer at zero dB, it's pretty much neck and neck. There's no variation there as we've come to expect from that. Now moving down to minus five dB, we're gonna start seeing a little bit more fluctuation. Uh, about a couple decibels boost already on the subwoofer. And then minus 10 dB, we're looking at even more fluctuations in terms of dynamic EQ at about five dB increase. And then as we move down to minus 15, again, we're looking at about a, a six, five to six decibel increase there, uh, fluctuating because the low frequencies have a really hard time with the SPL meter. Again, minus 20 dB, we're seeing well into the seven, eight decibel region of boost. Minus 25 dB, uh, we're seeing again about a 10 decibel already. Uh, it's it's pretty, pretty pronounced there. And then moving finally down to minus 30 dB, we're at 51, uh, not even registering on the left and we're, we're, we're hitting at about 62 dB, which is insane. So what's the big takeaway from all of this? Well, for me personally, I will not be using dynamic EQ at all now or in the future. It really messes with the overall balance of the system. Even at minus 10 or minus 15 dB, it's boosting those surrounds and the sub far too much for my taste and really throwing off the balance of the entire system. A balance that I do work hard to make sure is correct. I run Odyssey, I make sure my crossovers are set properly. I make sure that I level match each speaker manually because sometimes Odyssey can get it wrong. Just for me, I do work hard to, to get all that stuff right. And for this to kind of come in and just really change all that dynamically with zero control on the user's end other than the reference level offset, I personally would not recommend it. Now with that said, if you do use it, uh, no judgment for me. I mean, sound is highly subjective. What sounds great to somebody sounds terrible to the next. One man's trash is another man's treasure, as the saying goes. I personally think it sounds terrible. I have used it in the past and it, it does muddy up the, the sound mix quite a bit, especially if you listen at minus 15 dB, which I think a lot of people find a, a comfortable volume, maybe even minus 20. It's really boosting those surrounds and the sub way too much for my liking. I don't mind running things a little hot if that's your preference. Personally, for me, I like a nice balanced system. I don't run my subs hot. I don't run my surrounds hot, my Atmos speakers, none of that. It, it's all level matched, so it matches with, with each speaker. But again, if that's your thing, more power to you, I'm not gonna judge you. Uh, just enjoy your system any way that you can, especially in, in times like these. And that's gonna wrap up this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I did have fun making it. It's something I've always wanted to try. I've never actually sat down and did before which was test out dynamic EQ and what it's doing to the levels of each channel uh, as you adjust the volume. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I thought it was a really cool kind of experiment and uh, hopefully you came away with it a little more knowledgeable on what it's actually doing to your system. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more videos like that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, give me a like on this video and maybe leave me a comment uh, in the comment section below and let me know if you use dynamic EQ, if you like it, if you hate it, if it's something you don't use at all. Heck, even let me know if you run Odyssey. I am going to be doing a video on Odyssey uh, fairly soon, uh, kind of going through my process of how I run it. So uh, look, look out for that. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one where I travel back in time and then my mom tries to date me and ends up kissing me.